If you love what we do, then please consider supporting Cryptfail on Patreon. Your support helps us grow and to create more content more often. And now, on with the show. She's going to turn and see why she is being poked. Daisuke is there, prodding her left arm just gently. Okay, so it's... I think it's time to leave. Uh... I see... Why? Uh, because Rin's already left. <laughs> oh... Uh, uh, yes, I, I will get ready to leave. Do you know where any of my things were put? Uh, at the end of your bed. Oh, all right. Um, yes, thank you. I, I will be fine. And she's going to sort of get up as quickly as she can can and begin packing look for anything that may have been left behind and then head downstairs and outside or was there even a downstairs she may not head downstairs she will head outside and look for Daisuke and Daisuke is standing out front it's still dark and obviously the sun's coming up and it's very cool a brisk morning and staring off down the road you can see uh, Rin out uh, uh, probably a few hundred metres down the road on top of the horse and she's sort of wearing a kimono and she's um... Do you know why she wanted to leave so early? Aside from the fact that she's been a little bit upset for the last uh, six days. Um, she mentioned uh, last night that she wanted to get to the next town to go see the mayor. I was... I was worried she was upset, but I... Well, she's not upset at you. She's upset at herself. That is possible, but unless she's discussed with you... The events of last night, that may have changed. And Daisuke looks at you really confused and cocks his head to the side last night? <sighs> there was an incident? Uh, a visitor? I was given information. I... I relate it to Rin in order to try and convince her that the whole thing had not been a dream, but I worry it may have upset her. No. I, um, a visitor? Um, I guess we can talk about that later. I, no, this, um, she has been... Upset with herself for the last week for, uh, I guess, your current condition. Um, I... She blames herself for you rushing in and uh, getting wounded in battle. <laughs> so Why Why would she blame herself? She, well, because she's a uh, tactician 
Um, uh, Even if she had uh, told me not to enter the monastery at that time, I would have. It was not a planned move. It was simply uh, the spur of the moment. Yes, which is something that Rin struggles with. Um, the practicalities of battle uh, often elude her. Um, she tends to overthink situations, uh, even post-fight. Um, but she has, she has and does a lot of preparation before she goes into a duel, which, you know, to me, I can understand, but I mean, uh, if you're ready to fight, you're ready to fight. So, um, but for her, given the situation that we had the other day, uh, she felt that the situation was rushed, there wasn't enough time to work out the tactics and allowing you to go in. She blames herself in a way. Um, she should not. I never said I was going to enter the monastery. I only did so when it seemed necessary. Mm, but I still guess that she holds herself, mm, in, with, you know, in res some respect, responsible with regards to that. So... Um, uh, she should have been there to protect you. No, she should... She should not have. When she thought... And, and it, you know, he's already... He started walking and he's a talking and walking at the same time. Yep, she's walking alongside him. Yep. Yeah. Um, so... When uh, Miss Saito-san uh, believed that you had been uh, uh, killed, she may have lost her cool. The bandits were in such shock that it allowed Janusuke to uh, dispatch the bandits. I see. I have seen Miss Saito-san lose her cool. She... I have seen Miss Saito-san lose her composure on occasion. Um, uh, but this time, I think, was possibly caused by the fact that she thought that, that she had lost you. So, Miss Saito-san... Uh, considers you as a close friend, so given that she has very few friends. I see. I apologize for the trouble I have caused. It was my own fault. I was reckless. Daisuke shrugs. Reckless or not, that is your decision to make it's beyond miss saito san's you know decision um, to follow that but uh yeah you have to understand that she might be uh, a little bit um she might be reserved for a day or two until she uh, sorts it sorts out the uh, sorts out the Sorts out everything in her mind. In her mind, she's still working things out. Oh. I understand, I believe. Well, and there's no need to apologize on your part. I mean, this is purely her. She uh, needs to make sense of uh, a situation. So uh, uh, she, I think she overthought the situation, thought you had... Um, been killed by the bandit. Um, Admittedly, it was a bit of a close thing. Well, can I say, uh, perhaps not do that again too soon? I shall certainly endeavor 
but not to. Again, it was not a planned action. Of course, you don't have to justify it with me. <laughs> um, but she was worried, so she was at your bedside for the six days um, until you ah, came around. I see. That was kind. That is Miss Saito-san. Um... And with that, he looks up the road. Miss Saito-san, or Rin, has sort of gotten away a little bit. And he turns back to you and he says, I think we better walk a little bit faster. Understood. And she will speed up. Daisuke talks about hunting and... The road and the next town and what happened over the six days which is there's not really that much to tell but he sort of elaborates on um, the smaller details of things the comings and goings of certain people again if you require assistance with hunting i am capable My clan does not have land fit for growing rice. Uh, hunting is our main source of sustenance. Uh, Miss Biako-san, don't get me wrong. I believe that you are perhaps a proficient hunter. But if you were to do or undertake this task, then I would be... And besides, it gives me time away from Miss Saito-san. Is that something you seek? Um, Miss Saito-san always has a lot of attention or pays a lot of attention to detail. Is that something all people of the Crane Clan do? Not all. I can understand having requirements. So the day wears on, and as the sun slowly starts to sink, you start to see smoke above the trees. And as you get closer, you see a town. And it is the largest town you've been in for a bit. It is actually a town, not a village. It is a medium-sized town. And you're coming in from... A uh, smaller road, and you join onto the main road, which has a lot more uh, people going in both directions. A lot of merchants, a lot of peasants. The odd samurai, all different clans. And Chiaki will look slightly hesitant about a larger town. Well, um, I guess we should look for a place to sleep. And you're moving through the, the town. It's probably about... 2,500 people as a general sort of size and there's a couple of guards at the main gate the main gate is wooden and it's open at the moment and they don't really pay you that much heed as you walk by they are checking everyone out but it's it's a brief sort of glance they're obviously looking for uh, miscreants who are obviously miscreants and anyone who just looks sort of you know more normal or samurai or whatever they're not not challenging the ground is dirt but well packed and you can see an inn by the banner that's hanging outside further down the street and between you and the inn is a small crowd of maybe 15 people and they are clapping and watching a street performer who has a wooden top and some metal tops like spinning tops and she is balancing them on the edge of the tanto blade and they're ooing and ahhing and clapping okay well Rin would have stopped um, her horse there and would be watching the 
performance? Chiaki will be watching the street performer as well, considering the horse has stopped and everyone else seems to be. And she's really good. Like, she's balancing the tops and she's got three on the, the edge of the, the, on the knife edge. And she sort of flicks her wrist and one gets topped, like thrown into the air and she catches that. The other two sort of bounce and land back on the blade. And then she flicks again and catches the second one. And then she ends her act by turning the blade from horizontal to vertical. Oh. And the top spins along the blade to the, the very tip. And then she holds it there before dropping the blade and catching the last top in her hand. And then she bows to the crowd as they start clapping and they start throwing some coins into a ceramic bowl she has on a small table. They throw some coin in, you know, and then that person says something to her and moves off. So the, the crowd is slowly going through that process. Rin slides down off the horse and... Rin slides down off Amaya, the horse, and she pulls out a couple of gin out of her purse and walks up to the street performer. And she is wearing a bright, clean kimono, and it's red with lotus blossoms. And she has dark, mischievous eyes, long black hair, and is very pretty. And considering Rin is going, Chiaki is going to follow because A, she doesn't know what else to do, and B, it is possible translating may need to be done. Uh, Rin smiles and hands the couple of gin over to the street performer. And she takes it and bows. Thank you, Samurai. I don't get many Samurai watch my performances. I feel honoured. My name is Kitsune. So yes, Chiaki asked her if she was from the Kitsune family. Oh, no, I am not. My, uh, my mentor called me Kitsune. She said I was like a fox. Uh, I understand. You do not look like you are from around here. No. I do not mean to be rude, but you seem a unlikely trio. That seems a fair assessment. Unlikely trio? Daisuke asks. Well, most who have been travelling through of samurai rank are travelling in a small entourage of their own clan. You appear, unless I am mistaken from your markings, to be from three different clans. That is correct. And only two of us are samurai. Oh, forgive I me. Am... I did not mean to elevate someone's station. <laughs> <laughs> Getting offended by being assumed to be a higher rank. Your performance was very impressive. Thank you, Samurai-san. I have trained many years to try to uh, perfect my art. A girl has to do what she can to get by in a somewhat unfriendly world. Miss Kitsune-san, uh, would you be able to guide us to where we could possibly find lodgings for the night? So she turns and she points to the building that's about 80 metres away and she says that is a decent middle class inn it can be quite busy but they are fair and the food is good and the rooms are clean or you can go further down the street and turn left and look for the building with the green roof it is more expensive and will have more samurai staying there whereas this one might have more merchants saito san do you have a preference rin turns to chiaki shakes her head and upon when she sees you and she looks down at your at Chiaki's left shoulder so a, a pain crosses her face and then she 
faces away. And the magistrate's office? Daisuke asks. She looks a little mischievous. She sort of narrows her eyes a little and she looks at you and says, I don't have much to do with the magistrate's office. It is close to the centre of town. Thank you for the directions. You're most welcome. Rin signs something to the girl and Daisuke sort of catches it um, just in time and he says to her, um, Miss Saito-san commends you on your performance. Thank you, Saito-san. And Rin bows to the girl and then starts walking the... Uh, starts walking a mayor off towards the the inn with which one the the middle class one uh Chiaki will bow as well and then turn and follow Ren. So just before Chiaki leaves, if you haven't seen festivals that much, tomorrow night is one of the farmers' one that they put on. Then the centre of town uh, will have many different street performers, and I am performing tomorrow evening. If you are still in town, if we are still in town, we will. I am sure. Go to the festival. Uh, she's sort of looking at Ren and Daisuke like, uh, would we? I think so. Oh, certainly. Um, yes, we haven't. Ah, uh, well, I know I haven't been to a festival in a while. I have never attended a festival. Really? Truthfully. Well, Miss Biaka san I think we pr- should probably stay. An extra night, perhaps? I confess I would be interested to attend. I'm assuming they have good food as well, he asks Kitsune. Oh yes, there's street performers, there are street vendors. It is the big festival for the region. Um, the festival of... I believe it is a farming festival, fertility for the soil and uh, crops for the coming year. And they celebrate uh, the the success that is going to be coming. Uh, With any luck. Thank you again. Uh, Goodbye. And she has her hands on up just above her knees and she bows. Nice to have met you, Miss Kitsune-san. To you as well, Samurai-san. It's the day before the festival, so people have arrived for it. It's also a medium-sized town on the main trade route. Rin just sort of looks up and seeing the amount of patrons coming in and going, she turns and starts leading Amaya down the street towards the other inn. Uh, Turkey will look slightly relieved that they are leaving the busier inn and follow along. Uh, Saito-san... Daisuke has suggested that we remain another night in town as there is a festival tomorrow. And she stops and turns back and her her eye isn't really engaged with Chiaki's eyes. She's sort of looking direct look and she signs um, that she has no objection. And she bows her head and she's looking at the ground and she continues walking ahead sort of goes out ahead of the the two of you and uh enters the the inn with the green roof and there is a small fire burning adding warmth and light and there's a couple of lights on the wall probably candles or possibly oil lanterns 25 people in here so about half the number of the other one and about half look to be samurai, and the other half look to be merchant class. The tables are polished wood rather than functional uh, sort of wooden tables like a lot of the other ones you've been at. 
the floor is a soft mat and there is nice cushions at each table. Okay. Um, does anyone walk up to Daisuke as he enters the thing? A woman about 50 comes in and she bows. Good evening, Samurai-san. How can I help you? My master and her companion would like a room for the night, um, as well as one for myself, and and dinner. Very good. So we'll be staying for two nights. We can accommodate. And then he comes back outside. I have acquired us two rooms um, with dinner. I'll take care of Amaya and... I guess you both can go in and grab a table. Thank you. Chiaki will, as directed, head inside and find a table to sit at. I guess you wake up the next morning and and Rin, again, uh, her bed's already um, made and everything's in perfect place. Uh, Daisuke's waiting outside. Chiaki's been looking a little bit concerned ever since the day before, and and she will say, If it is necessary, I could pay for my own room and and sleep separately. I feel my presence is causing Saito-san to be more upset. Mm. No. Uh, your presence is not the issue. It's just she'll work through it. If you say so. Mm, do not concern yourself with her state of mind. Shall we head to the magistrate's office? I suppose so. So it's a the, the center of town is more of a actual courtyard, open courtyard, and there's a well off to one side, and you can see a rather functional building. That looks quite sturdy, and there is a sign outside that says Magistrate. Daisuke will head inside. Chiaki will follow. And there is a simple counter. You can see cells at the back, of which there's a couple of uh, people in it. And there is a older gentleman, about 60, and he's wearing the samurai top knot. And he has both swords, and he is walking around the office, going through papers, looking for something. He glances up. Hello? Yes? How may I help you? And he keeps going through the papers. Are you in the right place? <laughs> she assumed he knew what they were doing, because she doesn't. Forgive us. Um, we're here to claim bounties. Stands up straight and walks over the counter. He ruffles through his robes and pulls out the um, the bounties for the bandits that had been dispatched. Ah. And he takes it, looks at it, and goes over to another pile and starts flicking through it. Hmm. This only just came in. And he pulls out the sheet, and he walks over, and he says, There is a code phrase. Uh, I don't know. I'd, like... Put me on the spot. And he looks at it. Huh? Big pause. Laugh. Big pause. I don't know. Why do they put me on the spot? <laughs> <laughs> you must be Daisuke. <sighs> Walks over and he opens a drawer and takes out eight silver coins and comes over and picks up a, a ledger and turns it around and places it there and he, and he points to there's a list of uh, bounties some have got signatures next to it and he says please sign Daisuke picks up a quill dabs it in the ink and then signs next to the bounties and he puts the stack of coins in front of you. Thank you, Magistrate. <coughs> As You're very welcome. Daisuke. Thank you for your service. Daisuke picks up the coins and bows. 
And Chiaki will bow as well. I guess Daisuke will go back to the inn because uh, he's been walking all day yesterday. Chiaki would go back and wait at the inn as well. She doesn't really have anything else she would like to do. So you can see during the, the morning part that they are uh, in the fields outside of the town uh, with some of the, the local priests and that then they're, they're doing prayers and not so much the festival, they're, they're doing the um, religious side of things. And they're just setting up in town, right? Yeah, during the day, you probably start to see the um, vendors and that getting prepared. Chiaki's going mm -hmm. to wait at the inn, I suppose. If she gets terribly bored, she may go speak to the horse. But Rin, during the day, uh, she's just going to walk around town, making a mental note of where things are and what places, what shops. I guess she's looking for anywhere that might have a Shuriguru armor. So the, it's an armor weapon store. A lot of the stuff is sort of functional, basic sort of stuff. There's no really nice katanas or anything. There's a couple of katanas, but they're not, you know, super fancy or anything. And the bows are reasonably straightforward. The armor is basic. It's not, uh, there's no, nothing's elaborate about it. A couple of Yaris are there. Daggers. Rin will reach inside a kimono and pull out a, a scroll and hand it to the, I guess, the armorer or the merchant who's selling the armor. He takes it and opens it. Yep. So she's wanting a, um, a karma made up in the style for the Fox Clan. So I will say. Okay, well, well, we'll come to that. So, yeah, he he will look at her, and he's not sure because you didn't say whether or not it says she can hear. So he just nods that he can do that. She pulls out her purse and looks at him with her one eye. And he holds up six. Okay, so she... Jeez... Let me see if I've even got that. Yep. I do, but... We were talking about whether we left some at home, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> she counts out the six koku and hands it to the armorer. And he writes out a receipt, takes the money, and gives you the receipt. Rin will... Uh, when she gets back... Rin slides open the door and realizes Shiaki's in the room and she sort of hesitates and signs, are you okay? Yes. Are you? She signs, I am. She slides over to where the p packs are and... Uh, looks like she pulls out her clothes that are obviously cer like ceremonial clothes. And Chiaki will probably just wonder what she's doing. She starts getting changed into the um, ceremonial kimono that she has. Is a festival something you need to wear formal clothing to? She shakes her head. All right. That is good. Are you ready to go? Well, she looks out the window of the room and shakes her head. So she she smiles faintly, looks up at Chiaki and... Uh, I am ready to leave if you are. And Rin nods, um, heads outside. Um, oh, I see you both ready. Yes. I was wondering when you two were going to come out. I think the festival's already started. I see. So the town is quite busy. This does seem to be the one of the busiest nights you imagine for the town. And there is a lot of different street vendors. There's 
all sorts of food from like dinners, snacks, sweets. There's different performances. Some uh, more like street performers are at different corners and stuff. Everything from jugglers to mimes and uh, magicians. And then towards the center, there is a geisha on a, there's a makeshift stage and uh, she's been performing different um, dances and after her there's been a kabuki short play uh, by a traveling group of actors that look like they travel from town to town doing different kabuki plays so there's all sorts of different things that are that are going on Chiaki's just looking back and forth at everything, sort of fascinated, as she has never been anywhere quite so busy, and definitely not with however many different performances are going on at once. There's a lot of noise, there's a lot of people. Um, it does all sort of mix together and can be quite overwhelming. Yes, she's definitely sticking very close to the other two. <laughs> not about to go wandering off anywhere. And the peasants, they they got a lot, lot of uh, brightly coloured coats that... Um, there's a lot of dancing and different music at different places. A lot of it's faster paced. Food is good. And it's good. There's, there's cooked meals of, you know, meat and soups and rices and stuff, as well as then into colder meals and then there's definitely desserts and every now and then um Rin might you know tug at his sleeve and and point and um use will uh, go off and watch a performance might have seen kitsune and watch one of her performances but then um after you know daisuke appears to wait as long as he can before he's off to go grab you know <laughs> maybe something sweet that he hasn't had before <laughs> and and given that the uh, you know Rin doesn't want to be left alone in a crowd and Chiaki probably does feel the same way oh yeah she's sticking very close she does not want to somehow become separated in a large group at one point after uh, probably a couple of hours um, at Seems like Rin gets a little bit stressed out, and she's um, she's now just holding on to. Um, she's got her arm wrapped in, locked with um, Chiaki's arm. So after around ten o'clock, it starts mm. to slow down. People have been sort of doing this for around one in the afternoon. Okay. So the street performers are starting definitely by then to be tired. The uh, <laughs> Fair. The energy is has been slowly coming coming to an end. So from ten o'clock is sort of when it sort of ends, but it sort of peters out from that point on as it sort of gets slower. And as you're heading back to the uh, inn, you can see Kitsune probably about eighty uh, meters away, uh, packing up, and she's just tied her um, tops into her bag when. One figure jumps out of the alley next to her and grabs her bag. So, uh, three more charge out from the other side and two grab her and the third pulls his dagger and is going to stab her. So it is initiative. Goodness. I guess Daisuke has gone, what the heck? And so the guy was rushing her with a knife. Um, uh, Daisuke has just dropped to a knee in one fluid motion. He's drawn, like, as if he, he practices this in his spare time, knocks an arrow, lets it fly, and the arrow scores true right in the middle of the guy's back, and his arms flail up to the side as he collapses to the ground and the knife flies out of his hand. So the two remaining look like they on that are on the left look like they're going to try to drag her into the alley. The one that was on the right is no longer in view and was running to the right. I had a moment where she was glancing around at anyone who was still left and then uh, staring at Rin and Daisuke and shakes her head like she's decided against something. And she is going to 
try and chase down the one who's out of sight. She is using her stance was the air ring, which is focused on reflexes and reacting quickly to things. So she's just going to take off running and survival, you said, to try and find that guy. All right. She's going to take off after the individual who grabbed the bag and is now heading down the alley to the right. And he had a head start. So actually, as soon as she turns into the alleyway, she does not see him. And there is another turn. She could go either left or right. She is actually going to pause for a moment. Almost just look like she's considering. But then very decisively, as though this is not a guess, but she knows she is going to take a left turn down a side alley. The side alley looks empty, but when she gets to the end of it, she looks over a pile of boxes to find the individual hiding there. And she does not look surprised to see this. It's a bad guy now. Yep. And they drag her into the alley. Rude. So she's bending down and and picking up the knife as she um, walks past. And she's going to go down a another street where she recalls the alleyway going down and it comes out on the street further down. He has cornered someone at the end of an alleyway. What is he going to do about it? Uh, he has dropped the bag and it lands with quite a loud thunk. Like it doesn't bounce or anything. There was definitely um, coins and that in there. And the tops, which are heavy. He pulls two tantos. And she has drawn her katana. And he's uh. standing with them, <laughs> holding them down against his uh, forearm. Okay, so he suddenly leaps at her with uh, a lot of ferocity. How do you do this? She was very, very confident chasing him down, and that seemed to be something that she felt quite comfortable doing. However, when she actually cornered him, she had a moment of, oh, right, uh, the fighting bit, and hesitated. So when he lunged at her, she was slightly taken by surprise, and he did manage to graze her arm, uh, but she wasn't completely uh, distracted in all of Daisuke's training, so some sort of instinct kicked in and she was able to retaliate and stab him in the chest. So she's got not a deep cut, but just kind of a shallow cut along her arm, I would say, for the disadvantage. And he slides along the blade from the momentum, drops his daggers, grabs her shoulders as he basically smashes into her with some force. Not expecting that, she will fall over. And he thumps onto the ground with the katana lodged in him. And and she will sort of scoot backwards away from him and... And just sort of sit there for a moment, like, what exactly did I do? Oh. And he's reaching for her with one hand, his mouth is open, his eyes are wide, but no sound comes out, and then he just dies. And she just continues to sit there staring at him, sort of horrified. As the they disappear into the alleyway, um, he's sort of, um, he's steps up and starts moving around so the LOA comes into view. Daisuke knocks another arrow and lets fly at the guy at the left. The, the guy uh, on the on Daisuke's left, so on her right, and he's on one side and the other, the other bandit's on the other side and they're trying to drag her in and she's, she's squirming and, and struggling and, and uh, I guess trying to kick at them and throw them around and they're struggling pulling her down the alley and an arrow strikes him in his 
on the top right part of his shoulder and sort of knocks him uh, away from her. He loses his grip. And as he turns to look at the arrow and pull it out, another arrow strikes in the middle of his chest and he looks down and looks up to see Daisuke knocking another arrow and the bandit falls to his knees and slumps to the ground. And as the arrows hit the guy, he lets go of Kitsune because he can't keep gripping her while taking an arrow. I did say that. Yeah, he wouldn't be able to do it. So she, now with one arm free, grabs his dagger as the guy starts to fall and she starts slashing wildly at the guy holding on to her and she connects with his face and he lets go of her and staggers back with a deep gash in his face and then he turns and runs. Daisuke is just uh, taken off down the alley. And if it's the length of the alley, he can see her at the far end where she was grabbed originally. Okay. Well, he'll head up there to her. Rin's going to just walk back the way she came. And she looks a bit disheartened. All right, Daisuke finally catches up to uh, Kitsune. Are you okay? Uh, Yes, thank you, Samurai. She looks a little in shock. She's dropped the Tanto somewhere in the alley. She looks, you know, disheveled, but there does not seem to be any visible wounds on her. And Daisuke says, uh, is crime bad in this area? And she sort of blinks at him. Uh, no more than any other town of this size. I wonder where Miss Biako-san got into. What did they take? My bag. Bag full of money? I have the earnings I made today and my tops. Oh, and your tops. I did well for the day, but I would not have considered it worth murdering. They did seem pretty intent on dragging you away. and I do Rin, not know why. Rin appears from the, um, um, the road that she went down. And she looks like she's looking around. And Daisuke looks at her and she signs to him. No, she hasn't returned. And then she signs something very rapidly almost with a angry expression on her face and it's like I don't know where she went I think she went down that way and Rin turns and starts walking uh, uh, swiftly down maybe the way that Chiaki had headed off to and maybe she's not sure <laughs> she's going down the right alleyway at the end of an alleyway, there is um, the one guy who'd run off down that way is lying dead, impaled on a katana, which is still all the way through his chest. There is a bag lying next to him, and Chiaki is sort of sitting huddled with her back against the wall, just staring at him. The one sleeve of her kimono has a tear in it, and she's got a shallow-looking cut. It's not serious, though. You can tell she is not horribly wounded or anything like that. It's a while before she reaches the end of the alleyway, and it's it's fairly dark. And she comes upon the scene, and she but no, no before that, and she uh, comes to the end of the alleyway, and uh, deep. Inside, she's starting to really stress out that something bad has happened to Chiaki. And she starts walking quicker. And she finally comes upon the scene of the the dead bandit on the ground. And Chiaki up against the wall, just staring at the bandit. Rin looks down at the body of the bandit with the katana still sticking in it, she turns and swiftly 
and gracefully moves over to uh, glides over to uh, Chiaki and kneels down next to her and just draws her head into her chest. And she does not say anything. Daisuke says to Kitsune, do you think this was an attack of opportunity? They seem pretty intent on taking your things as well as yourself. I really don't know. I've had to work the streets for many years and a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do to get by, but I've never had anything like this happen before. I think it might be safe if you stick with us until we can go to the magistrate's office. If you think that best. Uh, if you'll follow me, Miss Kitsune-san, I, uh, I think we'd better go find my master and then we'll go to the magistrate's office. Well, if she really, really, really doesn't let go for a long time, then at some point Chiaki will probably try and like lean back away from her. She's trying to see sort of what expression Rin has. Um, she's got a really sad expression on her face and she's got... You can see there's... From her eye patch, it looks like there's been tears leaking out and definitely streaming down from the other way. The Legend of the Five Rings role-playing game is available from Edge Studios, starring Raven and Sane as Rin, Emily as Chiaki, and Ghost as the storyteller. Sounds and music were provided by Sirenscape and Nash Music Library. This has been a Critvale production. Thank you very much for listening.